yesterday that when we're asked to factor, the first thing that we should always do is to look for a GCF. Always see if all three terms have something in common. Now, this one is a dead giveaway that it's a GCF for several reasons. Number one, we're factoring quadratic expressions. Okay, so x squared. <clears throat> but this one starts with x to the fourth. So that's dead giveaway number one. So when we look at all three of our terms, they all have at least x squared. So that's going to be part of our GCF. And then the other thing that kind of gives it away <clears throat> is that this leading coefficient is negative. We don't like to factor it when the leading coefficient is negative. So we're at least going to take a negative 1 out of this equation, hopefully something more. We can at least take out 2 because all those numbers are even. <clears throat> but let's see if 14 is uh, the greatest common factor. So let's just go through and divide 146 and see if it's evenly divisible by 14. It is not. <clears throat> So then I'm going to try the next biggest factor of 14, which is 7. That is not evenly divisible, but it is even, so it is divisible by 2, as is 264. <clears throat> so, that means our GCF is negative 2x squared. Let me get myself a little bit more room here. So we're just starting by taking out the GCF. And I think I showed this to you all yesterday. I think it's helpful when you're taking out a GCF to go through and show the division from each term. So that way you know exactly what should be going inside your parentheses. So negative 14 divided by negative 2 is positive 7. When you divide things that have exponents that have the same base, you subtract their exponents. So x to the fourth over x squared is x squared. Uh, I did this a second ago, 73, but it's negative 73 because it's a positive divided by a negative. x cubed over x squared is x. And then negative 264 divided by 2 is negative 132 and x squared over x squared cancels. <clears throat> so, we need to look and see if this trinomial is factorable. We don't like that 7 in front, so let's use our slips, uh, divide and slide. We're going to slip the 7 to the end and it becomes multiplication. So we've got x squared minus 73x, and let's find out what 132 times 7 is. 924, and that's negative. Okay, now this is the one reason why I don't really like slip, divide, and slide. It's because it gives us such big numbers, but it does help with having to figure out um, <clears throat> not having to figure out necessarily what spot you're going to do. Okay, so 924. I don't know. I'm just going to take a shot in the dark and say 12. And that gives me 77. But 12 and 77 are not going to add to give me 73. So let's try something else. Uh, I don't know, maybe 14. 14 and 66. Still not going to do it for us. Um, 16? Nope. 18? Nope. Mm, 22? 22 and 42. Okay. Um, that's still not working. Not divisible by 11. Not divisible by 9. Uh, 7 and 132, that's too much. Anybody else finding any luck? Okay, 17, 19. Yeah, not have much luck with this one. Hmm? 11? 
combined to get us 73. Now we need negative 73. So that means my 84 needs to be negative and my 11 needs to be positive. Okay, we're not finished though because that wasn't actually the problem. We've got to divide by 7. 84 is evenly divisible by 7. So that means we've got x minus 12. 11 is not evenly divisible by 7, and it does not reduce. So we're going to slide the 7 in front of our x. And that is how that one factors. Okay? So when you get those really big numbers, it might take you a little while to figure out what its factors are. Um, but it does work out. Okay. So always, always, always look for GCF first, and then see if you can factor the trinomial that is left. Okay, number 25. 10x squared plus 11x minus 6. <clears throat> it would be great if we had a GCF, but all three terms are not divisible by 10. Uh, let's see here, the next big factor of 10 is 5, so definitely not divisible by 5, and then we've got 2, and they are not all even. So, our only result, or option, is to do split by 5, okay? So, we've got x squared plus 11x minus 60. So factors of 60, one is positive, one is negative, that add to go to 11, we've got 15 and 4, and the first sign is positive, so that means 15 is positive and the 4 is negative. <coughs> we've got to go through and divide by 10. Now, we finally have a case where these numbers, these fractions, will reduce, okay? Uh, 15 and 10 are both divisible by 5. <clears throat> so that gives us 3 halves. 4 and 10 are both divisible by 2. So that gives us 2 over 5. And then we've got to slide both of these. 2x plus 3. And 5x minus 2. And remember, we can always check really quickly by foiling it back out. 2x times 5x is 10x squared. The outside gives us minus 4x. The inside gives us plus 15x. And the last gives us minus 6. Negative 4 plus 15 is positive 11. <coughs> okay, that last blue step is optional, but it never hurts to check your factor when they're pulling it back out. Okay, you can catch lots of careless mistakes uh, if you do that to check and see if you get the original expression. Okay? So, <clears throat> we haven't had to deal with this part before where when you divide, uh, those numbers reduce. Okay, make sure you reduce the fractions, and you can do that in your calculator. I did it by hand, but you can do that in your calculator. Let me show you. Uh, 15 over 10, you just want to... You know that's not evenly divisible, so go ahead and just press math, enter, and it will give you the reduced fraction. Do the same thing with 4 over 10. 4 over 10 fraction, it will be a 2 case. Okay? And then in this case, we had to slide both of those. Alright, so try 20. called the difference of perfect squares. Okay, the difference of perfect squares. Now, what sets the difference of perfect squares apart is that you should be looking for two terms. There has to be a minus sign in between them. And there must be a minus sign in between them. And your two numbers are perfect squares. I have a list of perfect squares up to 12 up here. Usually you're not going to worry about anything that's more than 12. You might run into 13 or 14 in a little while. You just 
this type 13 squared into your calculator, I believe it's 169. Um, but these conditions must exist for the, uh, the difference for squares. Now, this always factors in a specific way. Even though you only have two terms, you're going to have two sets of parentheses. Okay, usually that only happens if we have a trinomial, not a binomial, but this is the special case. You're going to have two sets of parentheses. One set is going to have a plus, one set is going to have a minus. Now, I always do it in the order that it's written, so we're kind of used to that uh, variable being the first term, but this time it's the second term, but that's okay. We're just going to roll with it. We take the square root of 36, okay, 36 is 6 squared, so we're going to put 6 in both of the parentheses. 49 is 7 squared, and it has the variable, so we're going to put 7v in the second place in both sets of parentheses. And that's how it factors. You're going to have the exact same expression. One has a plus in it, one has a minus in it. Now, again, you can always boil this out to check, and you can see what happens. First comes first is 36. The outside gives us negative 42v. The inside gives us positive 42v. And the last gives us the negative 49v squared. Notice the outside and the inside cancel. Negative 42 plus 42 is 0. That's why we don't have that linear term, that v, in the middle. Now, I am going to go ahead and show you uh, one more example here while we're doing this, and then I'll let you practice with some problems. Because I think this one's pretty simple. You just got to remember the format. Let's look at number 43. Okay, let's look at number 43. Uh, so, 43, we've got the two terms. We've got the minus sign in between them, but 162 and 8 are not perfect squares. 162 and 8 are not perfect squares. So, we should be thinking, maybe there's a GCF. Okay, they're not perfect squares. Let's see if 8 is the GCF. Let's see if 162 is divisible by 8. It is not. So, let's divide it by 4. That doesn't work. So, let's divide it by 2. I know that one's going to work because it's even. Whoops. Oh, I didn't put my two. Okay, so our GCF here is 2. That's 81R squared minus 4. Now we have our conditions. 81 and 4 are perfect squares. 81 is 9 squared and 4 is 2 squared. So two sets of parentheses, 1 plus, 1 minus, 9R squared is 81 r squared and 2 squared gives us 4. So you can have a GCF in combination with these as well.